incredible experiences from around the world. Stavanger is the third largest city in Norway, with a population of 228,000. It is known as the oil capital of Norway, and was one of the fastest developing cities in the country during the second half of the 20th century. Apart from the discovery of oil in 1969, an important role in the establishment of Stavanger as a large center of commerce was the development of the herring trade. The center of Stavanger is located around the harbor, from which point begin many beautiful streets leading to the old town and is definitely worth walking around. The city is very lively, especially during the summer, and when cruise ships approach the port, it gets really crowded. Our time here is limited, as our cruise ship docked in the port for only a few hours. So, rather than spending our time visiting a couple of the many museums, we decided to take a stroll to explore the city and to take a mini-cruise on the Lisefjord, which is regarded as one of the most unique fjords in Norway. At the top of the hill, behind the colorful buildings of the harbor, stands the Tower of Valder, where I went to take a few pictures of the city from above. Valberg originally served as a watchtower, and when it was built in 1853, it was the tallest structure in the city. Tickets to enter cost 20 Norwegian kroner, about 2 euros and 30 cents, and is open to the public Monday through Saturday. South of the harbor is a small lake called Brejavetnet. At the north part of the lake stands the Cathedral of Stavanger, which was built in the year 1150. Although we didn't have time to check it out, a few fellow travelers told us that the Norwegian Petroleum Museum, located in a coastal part of the city, behind the harbor, is worth visiting. When it reached 12 o'clock noon, it was time to board the speedboat that would take us to Lisefjord. The cost during this period, early September, is about 50 euros per person, and the cruise lasts two and a half hours. Lisefjord is the most photographed location in Norway because of Pulpit Rock, which is really breathtaking. As we left the bay, due to the speed of the boat, it was very cold, but that didn't stop us from enjoying every minute of the ride. The route up to the village of Forsand is southeasterly, where we turned left to enter the fjord and began moving northeast. We passed under this impressive bridge, which joins the two banks of the fjord and continued inward. Although it is quite a large fjord, reaching a length of 42 kilometers, it is the least populated fjord in the country because of its wild landscape and terrain. Throughout its length, except for Forsand, which I have already mentioned, and Liseboten, located across from it, there aren't any other villages. Only a few scattered houses which residents can only access by sea. This is because the slopes are so steep that a road can't be built. Moving on, we encountered beautiful scenery with lush green areas, mountains and waterfalls. At some point, the boat stopped and a woman from the crew came out to feed two goats. Pulpit Rock is a small plateau of 625 square meters and lies 604 meters above sea level. It boasts a magnificent view and is located about six and a half miles from the entrance of the fjord. It is one of the most photographed locations in the country which is why it is often the first image that comes to mind when one thinks of Norway. It is the most famous natural attraction, visited by thousands of hikers each year. The distance to it from the parking area is about six kilometers and takes about two hours of walking on an easy trail with plenty of signs directing you to it. 
Lisefjord, in this part, has a depth of 400 meters, meaning that the total height of the rock exceeds 1,000 meters. The mini cruise continued for a few more miles until we reached a large waterfall, which emptied out vast amounts of water into the sea. The boat approached close enough for us to take a few pictures. From here, and at a higher speed, we began our return to Stavanger. <laughs> <laughs> 